Hello everyone and welcome back to Farm Zero 22. We're back here at No Man's Land with Grover Games. The last month we ended up chopping corn a little bit early and we got all we wanted done, I feel like. I mean, we, I think we may, did about, I think it was 150,000 liters of corn silage. So we got our silo full enough for now. We were just a little under 400 after making a little bit of TMR last night. Uh, today I'm thinking we got some milk to sell. Let's check prices here. I was kind of looking at to see how the furniture prices were doing and they're on the way down to down so we don't really we can't really sell any furniture right now. Same with planks unfortunately. Cuz we had a little bit of those piled up but we'll keep stockpiling those right now. But milk is at its pretty prime price right now so we're going to work on getting rid of that today. Uh one of the other few jobs today I think I think we're gonna get rid of our box spreader and get get a oh, I'm trying to think what's it called. I think we're gonna get rid of our box spreader today, and we're also gonna pick up a uh, side slinger spreader instead. That box spreader has been good for the last few years we've used it, but we're starting with us getting a lot more cattle. I think we're gonna want a box spreader, especially since we're gonna have a lot more volume to haul, and we got. We got more than enough tractors now to handle handle it. Back this up here. And as you can see, if you missed last episode, we picked up ourselves a tanker here. I wonder if I gotta unfold it. Is there... Oh, there we go. I gotta open the lids. There we go. First time using this mod, so it's... Still a little something I gotta work with here. We're gonna get this filled up. We won't get it completely filled with milk. It's kinda looking to see if we actually got to see the liquid in there. Get those all closed up. But we're gonna go get this hauled in. And get this all sold. And um, I know we got, I should be saving money right now for our new planner. But we got, I think we got quite enough time that we could, should be able to make the new investment into a, a new manure spreader. Especially since it's going to provide some value to us in the long run, especially with the free fer fertilizer. And I was also thinking this. So, since we got plenty of straw and we're not really going through it that fast, I think next year we'll try a new crop. I think we'll try give sorghum a try, just because it kind of fits our... Oh, it's going to fit our planning schedule a little bit better, so to speak. I'm thinking that the fields on this side of the farm, I think I'll plant all I think we'll end up planting those all in sorghum. I am not planning on upgrading our drill yet either. I think our drill's big enough for as little cro crops that we do for seeding that style, needing that style of seeder. We don't need to upgrade it right now. I know I talk well, a long time ago I talked about upgrading it, but Honestly, with us mainly doing row crop yet, I don't think I don't see a reason why we should have to upgrade yet. See how much we make here. Thirty-three thousand dollars plus almost a twenty-five hundred dollar incentive bonus for our environmental score. And to be honest with you, the one thing that surprises me about our environmental score right now, I know we we don't do everything to a T, but our score is like an average of 76 last I check. 75. And we're, we're not doing terrible. Like I, th I thought with all the plowing and stuff we'd been doing in this series that we would be, that we would be getting hit a little harder, so to speak on our score. So it, it's kind of weird. Cause if you think about the Elm Creek series, I'm literally do we're literally doing everything in there, try to get our score max out at a hundred or however high it goes, and we're just a little under a hundred because, so for some reason our nitrogen score keep, keeps getting messed up a little bit, and I'm not, sh I still haven't really figured out quite why that's happening there, and and it's just, I don't know, it's weird to me, but you know I can't. I shouldn't really complain, because it's it's really benefiting us right now. So, 
this backed up to here, over here again. But I think we're going to hook up the flatbed here. We're going to get that box spreader dug out today and get that loaded up. So that's ready to take that to town. I'm also thinking about getting rid of that little green water tanker. I figure we can, worst case scenario, we can just haul water up in this as long as we're self-conscious about how much we haul up there. Like, I'll only fill it up like 10,000 liters at a time or something like that, so that way. Or, I shouldn't say that because I completely filled the filled it up 10,000 liters last time. But I'll, it'll be something we'll keep an eye on. Actually, I think we should have cabs here shortly. Looks like next month we'll, we'll be calving, so that's good news for us. So we'll actually have another set of 10 new calves. And then we'll, be, we'll have to be selling those off before the price drops on them. For the dairy cows, I haven't really figured out how I'm going to start cycling those out. I think part of me wants to wait until the, until the next set of cows get close to having a set. Whatever set they are. So, like, for example, since... These ones will be the first ones to have another set of calves. I think we're going to start cycling them out, like, oh, putting, I think, selling six at a crack until we get a good good rhythm going, so to speak. And I just realized we're getting dangerously full in our slurry, t slurry tank, and I still have not experimented with that, with that stuff yet to figure out whether or not if we... If we put the slurry extension, if that's going to extend to the barn, or if we're just going to have to buy a slurry silo and transfer some of some of the oh some of the slurry itself to the silo later on throughout the year, it's going to be going to be interesting. Because the other thing is, I don't know if we're going to be able to go through all that slurry like quite like I hope. So we might we might have to put a little bit into the BGA, even though I'd much rather not. But it's it's one of those things we I have to I have to consider right now to keep our pit from from a, keep our below bottom pit from overflowing on the farm. So we'll unhook that here. Also, one thing I noticed last episode and I didn't fix it right away is the wheel, the mud guards or wheel fender, the front wheel fenders on this tractor were off, and I and I did not realize I didn't look too closely into this tractor. They have like four different sets of wheel fenders to put on here, depending on how you got your tires set up on this tractor, which I think I think is one of the coolest details out there. And I'm I'm kind of mad at myself right now for not noticing it. But the good thing is, I feel like oh, I don't want to unhook that. I want to I want to unhook the whole tanker. There we go. The good thing is, I, I'm glad it, I noticed it, so it's now it's a better late than never type ordeal. But we're going to get this box spreader hold, hooked up. This thing's been a great little box spreader, but... Oh, but I think it's... I think it's going to be time for us to say goodbye to it. And I'm... I'm really gr glad I found the 7810. It, it's been a really good tractor, but... Nothing wrong with the 7000 Premium, but... This is just older kind of style looking tractor. Just kind of, I feel like it fits the farm a little bit better. And just the fact that it has, it has quite a bit more power than this. Ooh. This is kind of awkward. We're just probably going to have to slide it up there the best we can. <laughs> this is, okay, this is fine. There. I made it on the trailer. Well, maybe we'll just sell that little green tanker later on. I'll just haul... I'll just probably haul that in with the... Oh. Oh, we'll probably just haul that in with the pickup, but let's see here. That wouldn't be a bad investment. I wouldn't mind having a big square baler versus a round baler. Just because... Just because it's a lot... It'd be a lot faster process, so to speak. But okay, pick up. The, I picked up this mod a while ago, so let's 
and I never really looked into it because I had I had a similar mod in FS19, so I knew I knew what I was getting into, but I think we're gonna stay away from that for now. I kind of want to get a different style baler before that. Um, right before we get too far, let's just turn that off for now. We're gonna pull the 4020 out. We're gonna we're gonna get set up selling silage today as well and filling our BGA BGA up so we can continue to have power. And I, th I think today, once we get the box spreader back, we're going to spend some time breaking that in as well. Getting rid of some manure onto the couple of fields we have over here. Getting them ready for... I think we're going to end up planting sorghum, sorghum next year. And the reason I'm leaning towards sorghum is because... With the way the crop rotations kind of line up, I think it's going to benefit us just a little bit more... Because then, as soon as we finish planting sorghum, we can plant that fall. We can start planting some some canola. Because I I honestly think we can get by a couple years without needing any straw. But we'll we'll soon find out here. Because like I said, we we really haven't gone through any straw that too quickly. So unfold that. I had to take this over there. So I think what the big plan for today is we're gonna. We're going to end up picking up a new manure spreader. That's a given. Selling the old box spreader. We're going to get the manure hauled on these two fields, and I think we're going to start chisel plowing today, so that way we'll have that much less work going into the next season. But we're going to start the time lapse here, and we'll see you guys in a bit.
All right, everyone, this is where we're going to be wrapping up the episode today. A little bit of a longer one. I really wanted to get this all knocked out today, ready to go, and kind of another spur-of-the-moment purchase, getting a little, getting a three-point ripper. But I've been wanting one for a while just because I think it'll make etching fields a little bit easier. The only unfortunate thing, as you can tell, it, it says we can pull at 12 miles an hour, but it seems like our tractors don't have enough snuff to get it up to speed but I think I think the 6195 white might be able to no 9195 excuse me white might be able to do it but this seems like the Kubota here is just just lacking a little bit of power here but we're spinning out right now so I can't really fault it for that I know the white would be as well but we're still gonna hang on to that little little Alice Chumbers chisel plow just cuz I figure that we got enough tractors around the farm that if we needed two tractors to go with plow and we'll be able to use that as well. But I think I think for the most part this is what we're gonna try and start sticking with for now for our main plow for now on. But but like I said, we got enough tractors around the farm, we got enough extra set of duels that we can still utilize that little chisel plow. I just figure we put that thing through quite a bit of a workout the the last couple of years. I think I I almost want to say I almost got some in-game hours on that thing already, and it's it's been a great little plow. But like I said, ne we needed to get something a little bit bigger, and we finally got it got it here. But another spur purchase moment too, I guess. I shouldn't be spending money like I am, especially since oh, we still haven't got gotten our planner re enough for our planner replacement yet. Like I said, we're gonna be going for. The 12 row one, I believe. Yeah, I think we're just going to be going with the 12 row with a few few extra options. I still haven't decided yet if we're going to stick with the bulk fill or just get an on row hopper. I, I'm kind of leaning towards the on row hopper fill just because it's actually about what the cyclone was for for capacity. But if we get the get the CCS tanks. We would we would actually probably be set for most of our fields for seed wise when we fill the thing up, but I'm I'm still playing with that because I kind of want to get the one thing I I guess I never cared for this mod back in 19. It's it's nothing against against it. I just don't like the folding animation of the gate the packer wheel so to speak the roll for the each roll. So usually I would go with like smart boxes and I. I actually don't know a whole lot about the smart boxes. I never ran any in real life. From my understanding, basically the smart boxes are for like applying herb, not pesticides when you're planting the crop as well. So I think it kind of applies like a little coating to the seed. If I got it explained to me right, but I am honestly not sure. So please don't quote me if you actually do know what, what it's for. But I know it's more, it's more or less towards taking care of the Oh, corn root worms and stuff like that that are in the ground that could eat the seed and destroy the roots and such such like that and the outer shell 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 of the seed so to speak but we're gonna this is what we're gonna be aiming for in the long run and we're not too far off the only thing I was thinking about is if we do if we went to a 16 roll that would make more sense for us let's see here but it's still the same capacity, which doesn't make any sense to me. Don't, don't ask me, don't, don't ask me the math behind that. But it'd be almost two hundred fifty thousand, and that would be, that would be without any of the extra options, because I kind of want to, would want to get a hydraulic oil cooler on there. And I, I kind of would want to keep ridge markers, even though I know we don't use them at all. So yeah, two hundred fifty-five thousand, and that's not a, and that's not a CCS one either. That'd be two hundred seventy thousand with the CCS tank. So we got plenty of time yet, and we, we, we should be able to make enough money. The one thing I'm, I'm still, I'm disappointed in myself because I keep saying it. Every year we're gonna finish that BGA, but I refuse to buy another piece of ground until we get that area all decked out and ready to go. That. That is my final word, and it might might put a little bit of staleness to the series because we're not expanding like we should. But overall, we've 
We've had a very productive year this year with all the equipment upgrades we've gotten between the semis, the flatbed, or the semi and the three tra different trailers we've gotten for the farm. So, but this is where we're going to wrap it up. Next time, next month, I think we'll be harvesting finally. So we'll be, we'll be pretty busy again. But if you guys enjoyed today's episode, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you're enjoying the content, please subscribe so you can stay up to date on the latest series. Above all else, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. And most of all, thanks for watching.